A typical day for me can start any time after about two o'clock in the morning, depending on where my first delivery is and what time I've got to be there. If you only just leave yourself enough time, the chances are you hit the traffic and be late. Before I was a lorry driver, um, I was a mechanic with a local bus company. I did four years with them. Uh, then I did sort of bits with other firms and then I came here to take my test with our training school and I've been here ever since. When you first start your training course, you go out on a two-hour assessment uh, and your instructor will decide how many days you need of the course. It varies from sort of five to 15. Um, and basically, you just go out driving every day, the same as you would with a car, but you're doing it all day. The great advantage of the driving test is you can pass it one day and go and apply for a job the next day. And if you've got the right personality and the right background, you could well be driving that seven and a half tonner or, or even larger vehicle within days. I have seen people spend 550 pounds and have an HGV license, some others have maybe had to spend 1500 pounds. It will depend on the ability, and each person is assessed individually. I could never have done secretarial work, hairdressing, because I. I just don't do things like that. I mean, I'm not a very domesticated person at home, and you can ask anybody that. So, I mean, I suppose I was just looking for something that suited me, something that didn't keep me confined in one space, something, obviously, something to do with outdoors, which is what I'm doing. When I said to people that I wanted to be a lorry driver, the main reaction was, you can't do it because you're a girl. Um, but I just, you know, kept saying, that's what I'm going to do, and I, I'm doing it. I like driving, I enjoy it most of the time. I mean, obviously the job has its uh, downsides as well as its up, but I, you've got to enjoy driving to do it. You're driving a lot of hours every day, so I mean, if you don't like driving, then forget it. You've got a very, very good sense of freedom the majority of the time. Um, most of the time, you're your own boss in one respect, until the phone rings. <laughs> um, if you're out, as long as the work's done, you park up when you want. And as long as you're at your first delivery the next morning, you stop more or less when you want. The bad things of the job um, is the long hours, the lack of good wages. And people are under the misconception that it's good money, and it's not. In the winter, it's not a nice job. Um, ideally, the summer is a brilliant time until it's holiday season and then you get, you know, your, your caravan club and all your idiots off on holiday that don't know what they're doing on the motorways and the other roads. The hardest thing about driving the lorries is just getting used to the size of them. That is all it is and getting used to how they handle what they do, with, obviously with them bending. And with the reversing, it's just practice and getting used to what you're doing. You don't have to be physically strong like you used to be because you've got power steering on them, air-assisted clutches. I mean, at one time, you did have to be, but not anymore. People think we don't work hard because all they see us doing is sitting down. But we do. A lot of our, work, our jobs come off by hand, so that is hard work. So. You've got to be prepared for that. If you're recruiting a person, there's a lot of things you're going to want as a driver. Um, to be honest, I sometimes think we want far too much for the amount of money that we're able to pay them. But basically speaking, you obviously want an honest person. And you want someone that's got the self-confidence to go out and give it a try. Secondly, you want a person that's got the the, uh, the, the, the attitude to life which says, I'm, I'm going to be at that job. Not one who says, I'm not very well, I won't turn in. You must have the attitude which says, I will go for it. If you don't, don't come driving. 
the job wrecks your social life during the week because you can go out one day and think you'll be home, but you might not come home again for another three days. It's not wise to make plans during the week because uh, the majority of the time you'll have to change them anyway. They've got to have an attitude to family life which doesn't mean I've got to be home at five o'clock. Um, they've got to be very flexible in their approach to their hours. That can be quite easily 60 hours to 65 in a week working between Monday morning and Saturday lunchtime, which is a lot. And they've got to have people who will accept that type of thing in their lifestyle or else their life will not be happy. This is a tap graph. You put it in first thing in the morning when you start work and you take it out last thing at night when you finish. This records how long you've been driving for, from there to there, there to there, there to there, and so on. This records your speed. The top line here is 60 miles an hour, just below 100 k's. You've got other duties, which is when you're loading or unloading, and you've got a rest period, which is 45 minutes, which has to be taken after or before four and a half hours driving. It's so that they know you're running legally. What do you mean? So you're not speeding, so you're not driving excessive hours, you're having proper breaks. That's basically, you're not working more than 15 hours a day is what they want to know as well. I wouldn't say it's a particularly lonely job. You do sometimes, if you've had a bad day, you do want somebody to talk to. You talk to other drivers, if you park up on lorry parks or whatever, obviously you get talking to other drivers. You can all have a good moan at each other about everything that's gone wrong all day, and obviously you understand each other's problems, what they've all gone through, why you're so wound up when you do park up. When you've done a day's work on something like this, you'll sleep just about anywhere. That's it, that's good night, finished. Where you can sleep? Well, I'm sleeping here, I don't know about you, pair. Sleeping in the cab doesn't bother me. It's something that you get used to very quickly. There can be certain difficulties working with men, depending on who they are and who you are, obviously. I mean, I don't have any problems with the lads I work with. They're a good bunch of lads. I suppose some women could, yes, obviously, they take a lot of things to heart. Um, you tend to get called darling, sweetheart a lot, which you just take as an everyday comment. You, you don't let things like that bother you, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't last two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> the prospects of a lorry driver are really quite good. If you think about it, driving covers so many different careers, from the dustbin truck to the vehicle that goes to tear out. They're all driver's jobs and they're vastly different, but they all need licenses. If you look around the managing directors of a lot of the transport companies in, in the UK, they're lorry drivers. With my qualifications and experience, if the jobs were there and people's attitudes were right, because you still get a lot of bosses that won't take women on, I mean, I could sort of go more or less anywhere and do what I'm doing now. Obviously, I'd need more training to uh, use flat trailers, rope and sheet, chains heavy haulage, anything like that. I've only been doing it three years, so I've got a long, long way to go. And people will always need drivers, um, obviously, because even though people moan, let's get it onto rail, you're never going to get everything onto rail, so drivers are always going to be needed. Years ago, there was always a job there for a driver, obviously things are different now. But if you've got an HGV licence, it's always a very handy thing to have.
But when I first started my training, it was just like doing easy stuff, peeling stuff, and like peeling potatoes and onions, and to see if you're good at those kind of things. And then from so on, we had to move into sections. So you'd work in different sections. So I've been putting upstairs in the antipasti bar, which is serving cold salads. What you do is you make all your salads and stuff for the morning, and then you come, you set up these for service at 11.30. So when you come up the stairs, like, you, you have all your salads and stuff, cold salads in the fridge. You just get everything out on the plates and put them out on display. So for 11.30 to be ready for service. So I was taking on an apprentice, apprentice at the moment. Um, they were indentured to you for two years on the scheme from the Hotel and Training Catering Board. They were placed with us as a full-time employee. Um, we'll let them go to college one day a week, and they get two days off a week besides that. Then we start to put them on a section where we think they'd be um, comfortable. We look at their ability, their speed, their attitude, what they can do, what they'd like to do and we start to train them from there on. There's no, we don't say, i.e. today we are going to show you how to make a soup. We say today you're on this section, you're on the cold larder, and the chef will help you, take you through everything, and you may just do small garnishes for the chef, or you may just make one plate of food up, or you may just get you to clean lobsters, or you may just get you to chop parsley. It starts off with very, very basic knife skills, really. If they're quite good, and they pick it up very quickly, they'll obviously progress faster and get onto other sections and do I suppose, more demanding jobs. When I get some more experience, I probably have the opportunity of working in a different section, like the sauce section or the, the crustacea, which do seafood, or pastry, which do desserts, ice creams and cakes and stuff. When we have the time, we'll say what to do at college, say that's how I did. For example, saute chicken. We'll say, right, today you can cut the chicken and saute for the sauce section, show me how you did it. Thus, we'll go through what they've learned to see if they've been taught correctly, or if they've been taught anything differently, or if they've been shown a different method that we can learn something from. After two years, they'll qualify, and they'll get a certificate from the, the board. And if we want them to stay with us, we'll offer them a job full time with us. They would then become what we call a commie chef. You have to be sort of calm person and not rush things and you just have to be organised and always have things and always listen to people. We can be very, very busy. The pressure's on, but you learn to cope with pressure. You're, you're taught how to handle pressure and what that is is organisation in work. Working in a team was worse. It's like a, a football team. You get the end result at the end. Each person does a little bit, and it adds up to a goal. Personality-wise, for a chef, I think they have to be very open, quite open-minded. I think attitude has to be paramount. You have to work out regardless, but attitude is really important for them. And the cheerful disposition, really. I think after a while, catering people don't take, take things quite so seriously. <laughs> Negative points of being a chef or inside a kitchen. I suppose one, you're indoors, um, you're never outside in the sunshine or in the fresh air. Um, late nights, early mornings, 
Sometimes the jobs aren't so glamorous, whether you're peeling potatoes or peeling onions, um, cleaning mussels. You may have to work, say, at Christmas when your friends are off and they're enjoying uh, Christmas with their family. You may have to work New Year's Eve. You may have to work Easter time. These are usually the times that everybody wants to enjoy themselves, so that they're very busy times. Now I've just got to pick some rocket for upstairs for service tonight. Got some pixels. Yeah. Right. Looking after your list. Now, it's really easy. I don't mind doing it. Are there some tasks that you hate doing? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like these. I don't mind doing them. I don't like these. No, no, no. You're welcome to them. I hate putting olives. What do you do there, then? Take the stone there. Just especially take the stone there. I hate those. And chopping some shallots. I hate those as well. Whether it's from a beef burger stall to a, a place like this, um, whether it's a small hotel in the countryside, there's always work I think for chefs, definitely, yeah. I could, like, travel anywhere, because I know loads of, loads of people that used, that used to work here and all, like, left, and, like, they all went to Hong Kong and Australia and stuff and worked as a chef. And people from, like, Australia and Hong Kong came over here and actually working in this kitchen now, being a chef, so it's a really good thing. You can actually travel, you can work on boats, you can work everywhere. Because they only get a certain amount of time off, whether it's two days a week and every odd night, they seem to really live life to the fullest. Um, so they can be accused of burning the candle at both ends an awful lot, I suppose. But then again, at least they're not stagnant. Money-wise, it isn't the greatest paying trade in the world but it isn't the worst. Um, you can earn very good money as a head chef uh, in different situations. Other career opportunities for chefs, um, quite extensive, there's industrial catering, um, there's merchant seamen, um, there's college lecturing, there's uh, private catering, uh, outside catering, boardroom lunches. Um, there's a lot of diversified um, industries that lead away from it. If you don't mind working weekends, you don't mind the hours, you love your job, you love the training and you love the food, and Paramount is really loving the food. To do food well, well, there's no other, there is no other satisfaction like it. In a few years' time, I would like to become a comic to start with, and I'm hoping to work harder so I can go higher, become like a chef de party or junior sous chef. So I've finished now, so I'm just going to get my clothes and... I'm going to get changed and go. How are you getting home? I'm getting a cab home. Can't be bad. Mm. How do you feel? Oh, I feel a bit tired. I suppose. Yeah? yeah? When are you working next? Uh, Sunday. I'm having Friday and Saturday off. I'll be back on Sunday. See you in a minute. Yeah.